Hi, I'm Terry Hunter, and I'd like to give you a preview of what you can expect if we work together. Before we get started, please do me a favor. If you find my videos helpful, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up so I know what you want to hear more about. Number one, my mantra is a million truths and one lie makes a person a liar, not a truther, if there even is such a thing as a truther. If I say it, it's true, far as I know. Not gonna be true, not somewhat true, not I don't have any idea if it's true, but actually true to the best of my knowledge. Number two, I've been on the planet for quite a lot of days. When I started in the business, some people actually hired brokers to consult by the hour like other professionals such as CPAs and attorneys and so forth. The concept of an agent being a trustworthy, true to the client fiduciary, looking out for the client first and only later concerned about his or her own nest feathering seems pretty quaint and laughable today. In fact, there are literally a hundred thousand salespeople type agents in my local MLS competing aggressively for only 3,000 sales a month. It's commonplace for agents to say, I'm just a marketer, I just happen to be selling homes. And I call this the raw material approach to clients. That is, the clients of these marketers are just raw material for that salesperson's climb to millionaire real estate status. By the way, the book of that same name, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, which is very popular among agents, as you might guess, proposes that taking 100 listings and selling 60 of them is totally acceptable. Not to me, and probably not to the unfortunate 40 of that 100 who didn't sell either. I figure that each and every one expects to sell and I concur with them, and I pull out all the stops to make sure it happens. In short, my attitude is that when my clients succeed, I'll do just fine, and without focusing on my own pockets. By the way, in the 369 pages of the book, Millionaire Real Estate Agent, I saw absolutely nothing about getting a good deal for the client just not covered at all. It was all about how for the agent should make more money. A comical situation arose when I was representing a couple looking for their first home. And it'll be illustrative of what I'm trying to say. The first three homes had flaws. I pointed out the flaws and I said, you know, we can do better. After each of the viewings, the same thing. After the third home that we viewed, the fiance spun around and asked me, are you really a real estate agent? Why, yes I am, I replied. Well, won't you make a commission if we buy a house? She went on. Why, yes I will, I replied. Then why do you keep saying no to the homes that we like? And I laughed and I said, I'm not saying no. I'm just saying we can do better. We can make offers on any of them or all of them if you want. I just advise and you're the one that makes the decision. Fortunately, the fourth home we saw was a view home at the end of a cul-de-sac with the valleys and the hills at our feet as we came in the front door. And we beat out the other multiple buyers without paying the highest price. It turned out that the home was being sold by five sons who'd grown up in the home. Their mom had passed away and they were in charge of the estate selling the home. I brought the buyer's 15-year-old daughter to the first open house with her dad and the fiance because I knew that the sellers would also be there for that first open house. She was so excited about finally getting her very own bedroom that she totally charmed the sellers. They told their agent, cancel all the scheduled showings and forget the offers that had already come in. They said they wanted somebody who loved their home as much as they did to have it for their own. And that was that. A different situation arose when I represented the seller. I listed the home for a million dollars, approximately $100,000 more than the last refinance appraisal said it was worth. 
I personally showed the home to a big box real estate agent who was buying for herself. She was a terrible negotiator. It was clear to me that she had to have that home no matter what. Sure enough, a couple of hours later, I received a full price offer with 20% down and a full loan pre-approval. Very good offer. I presented the offer to my seller. He was elated. Then I told him we should counter back to this full price offer. And he looked at me like I'd lost my mind. He was a prison psychiatrist after all, so he knew crazy when he saw it. When I told him I thought we could succeed by countering back a hundred thousand higher than our full price offer, he was absolutely sure that I'd lost it. He was concerned because he would lose his great buy on his new construction home if his own home sale failed. However, he was going from a $1 million home to a $2 million home, so he needed some more cash to smooth the move. And he trusted me when I told him I could either do it or else I could put it back together at our $1 million asking price. In the end, we closed 100000 over our $1 million asking price at $1,100,000. These are just two examples of putting my clients first before me and risk going from hero to zero myself if these situations hadn't turned out right. They could have eliminated my commission, dramatically delayed it, or even ruptured my good relationship with my clients. My attitude is there are many potential transactions I only have one reputation and I have to live with me. So I tell my clients the truth and then they decide what to do. Now there's a new twist in the real estate business that started in December of 2018. The realtor contract changed to clarify that two agents from the same company, one for the buyer and one for the seller are both double agents. This means that both are agents that represent the buyer and the seller. Well, that's impossible, of course. So what this really means is that neither agent can represent either buyer or seller effectively. After all, how can either agent favor one of their bosses over the other boss? They can't. So they're mere scribes and secretaries and not fiduciaries or negotiators for their clients at all, even if they started out as negotiators for their clients. But that's not all, there's more. If the buyer doesn't like the way your agent handles the transaction in a double agent situation, he can sue everybody in the transaction because your agent is his agent. The only way out of double agents is for the buyer to be okay with no agent at all, not even a double agent. And that buyer in a big company will not be getting any broker cash like my direct buyers do with the sale of your home. So it would not typically be acceptable to the buyer. My direct buyers happily agree to it because they're getting the money. That means if you list your home with a large company, you make all the buyers of all the agents in the entire company off limits to you if you want to play it safe. That could be hundreds of off-limit buyers, but not as bad as the double agent handcuffs where your agent can't negotiate for you and double agent lawsuit risk that I mentioned earlier. With me, you have two advantages. In the first place, I'm the only licensed agent in my boutique company, so no double agents here. Additionally, I'm a certified master negotiator with decades of experience in real estate brokerage, mortgage loans, and custom home building. I'm also a certified probate real estate specialist and a divorce specialist as well. Most brokers with my experience and education are busy running teams or their companies. So you usually end up with second tier agents. With me though, you get the guy with a name on the door, so to speak. So there you have it. If you think we're a good match, let's go for it. If not, then that's fine too. If this information has been valuable to you, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Also share with any friends and family that could benefit from my focus, my experience, 
and my commission sharing. I'm available to answer any questions you may have about residential real estate in Southern California. You can leave comments below or you can text me at 949-278-1595 or call me for that matter, same number. Or you can email me at terry at hunterbroker, that's hunter-broker.com.